congratulations on thank you on critical thinking for yourself i'm so honored like humbled i don't i don't know how to describe it it's uh i think that i'm more honored and like i said and humbled and i'm not surprised but i'm i can't I, it's been a 22 year labor of love. So the fact that it's actually happening, I haven't had a, a moment to actually be excited because there's so much going on. Especially like chess, you know, there's always a move. So every day, like as it gets closer to the release date, something new comes up. Like now we're going to be in theaters, whereas three days ago, there were no theaters going to be open. So <laughs> There's like, oh, it's like, it's like a gate. It's like a chess game being played, um, you know, every day. It's crazy. Oh, I'm so sorry, Gabe. Hold okay. on one second. Hold on. That's not even a real phone. It never rings. It's like God is talking to me. It's like saying, um, take a breath or something, you know, anyway, thank you so much for being persistent. I really appreciate it. I know that you reached out a long time ago and I, I appreciate you being persistent. Thank you. Hey, it's not a problem. Not a problem. We have another reporter covering, you know, the official press junket. Yeah. press junket. So, I uh, so, so I just want yeah. to talk to you, talk to you specifically about your story and yeah. how, how, how your journey came about. So walk me through. 22 yes. years ago, how did you hear about this story to make a movie for Critical Thinking? So the interesting thing is that this is a true story with a great backstory. You know, there's not a lot of movies that have backstories. Some do, uh, some don't. But this one in particular, it, it has an incredible backstory because it's, it's a true story about people in the worst part of the worst part of Miami in 1998. And you know, Miami in the 90s was not like a, the, the best place to live. It was really tough. It was, it was suffering from the East West Coast rapper, you know, issues and the Ellie Young Gonzalez thing. It was all of the rioting and all of that stuff. And, um, you know, there's always like a pearl in the oyster, you know, so, mm -hmm. So I, I wake up on a on a Sunday morning. I have no notes, by the way. I, I don't. I never have notes ever. That's so I, I just want you to know. Um, I wake up on a Sunday morning, and at that point, the Miami Herald had a magazine called Tropic, and it had a picture which has been my screensaver on my phone, my computer for twenty years, twenty twenty years, twenty two years of a boy with dreadlocks um, holding a king, and it said kings with a Z in the hood. And I read the story, and that was Sunday, 1997. And the next day, I called the coach, and it was about Miami Jackson Senior High School and how they had, uh, they had this team of what were gangsters, really, mm -hmm really tough guys that that did nasty things you know un, until they didn't anymore you know and it, this this coach mario martinez who is portrayed by john leguizamo he just became their godsend mentor and he recognized that these guys were special like john likes to say they were like superheroes they each had their own superhero power you know, they each had their own way of using their mind as a weapon. And they each had their way of being special on the chessboard because they certainly did not feel special or superpowered or anything but horrible on, in real life because their lives were pretty horrible. Most of them, uh, if not all of them, except for one or two were Latins. And they came here with either on rafts or by lottery, and they uh, they didn't have anything. And if it you know their their uh, 
When they graduated high school, if they were lucky enough to graduate high school, they had no options. Their options were selling drugs, may, maybe going into the army or law enforcement, or they had nothing. And it's interesting, when I did uh, 22 years ago reach out to the coach, they, and, I, and I got the boy, I had to interview, because th this is filmed in 1998, but it was a 10 year chess team. Mm -hmm. So I kind of feel bad for the other nine years. So I, I hope to make a, a TV you know, series about the other nine years. And I did actually name every player during the credits that went through the program. But it's interesting, when I interviewed these guys, um, they asked me this question and I, I still tear up, you know, to this day, but I, I don't, and, I, and I've, I don't even have an answer. They're like, why would a woman like you care about guys like us? Why? For so long. And I, I think it's because I'm an immigrant mm -hmm. as well. I came from Venezuela to this country. I didn't speak English. I was bullied. You know, I was, I went through the whole thing. And, and I think maybe that has something to do with it. Other, other than that, I can't, I know it just got into my skin and under my skin and in my blood. And I never made a movie before. I did, I, I, I did do other things on the small, on the small screen, but never to the point of the movie. But, you know, I always felt like if you have the grit, and you, you, you have an end game, you'll figure it out. And that's pretty much what I did. So I saw this picture, I called the coach, that was it. Well, let, then, yeah. So let's jump to 20 years later yeah. on how, how what, what, what were the pieces that, um, that were put together to finally get this movie made? Okay. So throughout the 20 years, you know, it, it was in the hands of many co-producers that honestly didn't believe me, didn't take me seriously, you know, took the movie on as, uh, as they were going to help and they didn't help and screenwriters that, that wrote, uh, a, a, you know, a script that had nothing to do with the actual true story. And it, you know how it is in Hollywood, I don't have to tell you, and it kind of went through about 17 years of me being told, hey, you know, I've made 50 movies in my lifetime, you don't know what you're saying kind of thing, or hey, that's simply not done that way, or that's not gonna work, or he doesn't have it, you know, and I'm like, that's okay, I'm not argumentative, I just simply go my own way and find a another way. So um, we finally, finally found the perfect person to write the script and it's Dedo Montiel. I know you probably know him. He wrote A Guide to Recognizing Your Saints, which is other than critical thinking, my favorite movie. Really, he's just simply, 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 I don't even know how to describe him. He's a, he's a soulful, um, sweet and rough and tough punk, um, punk rocker slash director slash screenwriter. So, Anyway, I found him and he came to Miami and he met the boys and the coach and me and, and it, it was uh, a match made in heaven and he had written this movie, A Guide to Recognizing Your Saints and it was a street movie and this is a street movie and I knew right away. So I chose him, once I chose him and once he wrote the script, mm -hmm. uh, one of the other producers in the movie uh, was uh, talking to John, and John was doing Latin history for morons, and I believe he wanted to play a teacher, and this is like, okay, um, perfect. So he read the script, and he's like, that's it, and then he wanted to direct it, which is his, because it's his directorial debut of a feature film, and this was about 2018, 2017, 2018. So it marinated for about 17 years. And then when John got involved, it still took, you know, two and a half years, but yet, but it, it took shape, it took form. And we had, uh, we had a finish line. Okay. And it, the, the, it, it, and from there, it just flew. It just flew. We, we always had, um, we had the funds and, we, they had me and uh, the boys 
um, were available and the coach and John was available at the time. I believe he had finished Latin history at that moment. And it was just all like the stars aligned, finally. <laughs> and uh, it was a great team. Yes. So, so was the biggest credit was because of John um, attaching his name to the project. I mean, he, he, he is pretty big in Hollywood. And this is remarkable that, uh, that you got him to make his directorial debut with your film. You must have been up, up in the air at that point. I was persuasive. What can I say? Um, and I wore pretty hair. My friend. No, I'm joking. I would, look, John is not, John is anything but not per perceptive. And he read the script. He knows Ditto. Ditto knows John. And he saw himself doing this. This is, you know, he's a Latin man and he had similar struggles growing up. And he just saw himself doing it. It was almost like written for him, mm -hmm. you know? And I always wondered, Gig, honestly, I mean, as much as I always knew it was gonna get done, always, it, it didn't matter. Why was it taking so long? Like, what was, what's up? And I realize now looking back that it needed to, you know, to marinate, you know, not to have like this Latin, you know, uh, because Latin people like to marinate their food, but it had to marinate. And when John came around, yeah, that kind of started things moving on faster because we had an artificial timeline, certain things. Um, uh, he had other things that he needed to do after. Um, uh, my partner was um, uh, is a little bit older, and so I wanted it done, you know, quickly. Mm -hmm. um, so when he attached himself, and he became the director because Ditto initially was going to be the director and John decided to direct. So everything just kind of really just took shape. And I think that the reason that John, I didn't have to convince him at all. I just showed him what Ditto wrote and he, he met me and he understood the passion behind it. He met the boys and the coach and he saw the, the toughness, but the vulnerability of of them both together. And I think he felt like he was 17 again, and that was him. I'm speaking for him and I hope he doesn't get mad at me, but that's what I think. Please don't get mad, John. So I feel that that's possibly what happened. Um, you know, it was a, a it's, it's an indie film. It's certainly not a high budget film. And, but we were uh, extraordinarily lucky. Uh, we had an incredible crew. I don't know how we were able to manage to get these incredible people that have won Emmys and Oscars for other things um, to work on the film. So mm -hmm. it looks like it could be a blockbuster movie budget uh, wise, but um, it's very indie and everything was done very indie. Um, even asking for music, even licensing music was done indie style. Everything was done indie. I just was like, that's just the way I wanted it to feel that way, not look that way on film, but, you know, feel that way to everybody. And, Ab and that's, yeah. Absolutely. So, uh, so tell me, what do the original boys think about this film now? That's a really good question. I was, I'll get back to that, but while we were filming, I, I don't know what was it about me. I couldn't stop crying. They were like, you know, everyone was making fun of me all day on the set, every day, because I was watching them, watching themselves being portrayed. And they were, I, aghast. I mean, in a good way. I mean, they, they, they simply couldn't believe, because when I first met them, they were 17. Now they're almost 40. Yeah. So the only word I had for them I had two words for them, and I don't know why they believed me, but they did, and I just said, trust me. You look at me, trust me was the hashtag. There wasn't even such a thing as a hashtag in those days, but if there was, it would, if there would have been, it would be trust me, because that's all I kept saying. And year after year, we renewed their life rights, year after year after year after year, until it got made. And I kept watching them, watch the, the actors, and we, you know, John did a brilliant 
I, I don't know how he managed to do this, but it's almost like on Saturday Night Live, like years ago when Eddie Murphy played um, Stevie Wonder and they had that lookalike contest and Eddie Murphy won and Stevie Wonder lost, you know? I, I think it's the same thing. Like these guys were actually better at the real guys than the real guys were themselves. Mm -hmm. They really embodied everything, their personalities, the way they look, the smallest minutia and the largest and the largest, you know, and, uh, of 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 actions in every way in the spectrum of it, uh, it was simply remarkable. And John, I credit him for giving everyone all the freedom to ad lib throughout throughout the movie because it's a street movie, and you certainly, you know, I mean, words were said within the first 30 seconds that, you know, some people aren't going to love, but you know what? It's 1998 in Liberty City, Miami. I mean, it's like, you it's not ballet class, you know, on the Upper East Side of Manhattan. I mean, this is what it is. And um, we kept it real and we allowed them to ad lib and to be free and to feel safe to see if their way may work better. And sometimes, you know, it, it did and it, it really, it's really, I know you, you've seen it. So, you know, uh, it, 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 I believe it, it shines through. Everybody felt safe to, to say and do and change things and we allowed it. And me, as the executive producer, I, of course, I had to, you know, I always had to do brush strokes, you know, broad brush strokes, you know, just to make sure every, everything was fine. It wasn't like the minutia things. And I just, I watched and I, I made sure that it was representative of what I saw in 1998, living in Miami and dealing with the coach um, and the boys that I, they're not boys, but I call them the boys. I actually call them the real boys and the faux boys, F-A-U-X, you know. Um, and they, they, they were like a pack, you know, uh, the eight of them, the 10 of them, excuse me. It was five boys and then the five actors. So it was special. Excellent. Well, let, let me wrap it up with uh, one, one more question. And, 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 it's, and it's basically for you because this was a 22 year journey. And how was your overall experience? And do you want to go through this again? Yeah, it was a great it was a great experience because I, it's like I went to film school all over again. But it took it was a twenty two year school with exams all the time. Um, of course, I, I definitely want to do it again. I have other projects that I want to do, but I can't let go of this one. Like I said, there were nine other years of brilliance, you know, that that should be told and actually is already told. It just needs to be heard. And so I'd like to, to you know, to, to, to finish with, to, when the movie comes out, to do a, a TV, whether it's a, a series or a mini series or just nine episodes of, the, you know, the rest of the boys um, so that everybody gets their due. Because there, I had to pick five. You have to stop somewhere. Um, but there are, you know, diamonds in the rough there that everybody should hear and, and see. Most most excellent. I, I think I think you did a terrific job, especially coming up with an inspirational movie. Even though it's twenty two years later, the timing could not be more perfect. It, that's another reason it took that long. Is not just the marinating part and the John part. Is that I believe the world the world is always ready for this kind of a movie, but because it it's not a fake movie, it's a real movie, and these things happen every day, as you know. But now. It is just almost like a balsam to make people feel included and to make people feel like no one is better than you, especially on a chessboard, because chess is the great equalizer in everything. So if your mind is your weapon, you're smart on the chessboard, you can be anything. I mean, that's just the way it is. And I, uh, I'm just thrilled and I hope the world, um, takes it and absorbs it and takes it in just like it was meant to be. Absolutely. And, and real fast, how is yeah. your chess skills? The only thing I know is that the queen of which they call me can do anything on the board. So I kind of like fits my personality. 
<laughs> so I've been begging the, the real boys to teach me how to play for 22 years. And I decided to not learn because I had so much to do with the movie because I know it takes a lot, you know, obviously it takes a lot. I know a little bit, but um, I promise, they promised me that when this is, when it releases, I'll get my private lessons. Yeah. <laughs> for, free. for free. Yeah. Excellent. Well, hey, I'm, I'm very happy for you, especially to a non-chess person making a chess movie. Yeah. That, and, that, and that's actually aspirational. So, hey. Because I needed to, you know what? We changed five lives forever. Five lives forever. Who does that? Mm -hmm. it, 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 not many people. And we did that through this movie at, when it comes out. These boys will never be the same. And that to me is the best thing I could have ever done. Hey, you, you don't realize until this movie comes out, it may actually change even more lives, especially the inner city kids. So I hope so. I hope so. Thank you for saying that. Thank you. Well, absolutely. Well, hey, thank you. Thank you very much. I really yep. appreciate you taking your, uh, your time this yep. afternoon um, to, to speak with me. It, My pleasure. Good. Thank you for reaching out. I appreciate it. Thank you. Not, not a problem. And we'll, and we'll, we'll keep up with the other stories um, with everybody else on production. So great. Anytime, just, you know, reach back out. I'm available. Okay. Thank you. Bye Please. now. Thank you. Bye.